Over the next few lessons, we'll discuss decomposition problems with no solutions. Now I would like to note that we're actually at a pretty exciting point in our course. We have already grasped the concepts of linear combinations and decomposition. And those are the two concepts upon which a lot, some would even say all of linear algebra is based on. Now that is not to say that there won't be any new ideas. As a matter of fact, there will be an abundance of new and wonderful ideas. But all of them will arise within the framework that we have already constructed. And all of those ideas will be expressed either directly or indirectly in terms of linear combinations and decomposition. Now let's get to the task at hand, which is decomposition problems with no solutions. So far, all of the problems that we use to illustrate decomposition have had one single solution. Now that's a pretty nice scenario. And compared to that nice scenario, things can go wrong. Now the word wrong is the wrong word. If all decomposition problems had a unique solution, then linear algebra would probably be one-tenth the subject that it is. And the world would be a very boring place, and I would probably be a lawyer. So, thank God that's not the case. Thank God there are other possibilities. And those possibilities are no solutions, which is the subject of this chapter, or infinitely many solutions, which is the subject of the next couple of chapters. Now, on the board, we have three decomposition problems, and all of them have no solutions. The first problem comes from geometric vectors, the second from polynomials, and the last from R3, or more generally, Rn. Now, our starting point is, as always, geometric vectors, because that is the space from which we draw all of our ideas and our intuition. And as far as geometric vectors are concerned, it's very easy to think of a decomposition problem that's impossible, that doesn't have any solutions. And here it is on the board right here. Simply make sure that the two vectors a and b point along the same line. And the vector c does not point along the same line. And the task is to decompose the target vector c in terms of a and b. And it's abundantly clear, isn't it, that this decomposition problem has no solutions. Nevertheless, let me explain why it's obvious in words, because those words will help us with other vector spaces. So, here is why this is an impossible decomposition problem. Well, because the vectors a and b point along the same line, all linear combinations of a and b will also point along the same line. And because the vector c does not point along the same line, it cannot be expressed by a linear combination of a and b. There you go, that's our explanation. And in the three-dimensional case, we can have a similar scenario. You can point the two decomposition vectors along the same line, and the target vector pointed in a different direction. And by the exact same argument, the target vector cannot be expressed by a linear combination of these two vectors. So that would also be an impossible decomposition problem. But in the three-dimensional space, you can actually make it a little bit richer. You don't have to point these two vectors along the same line. You can point them in arbitrary directions, as long as you make sure that the target vector does not lie in the same plane. And then, by the same token, this vector, the target vector, cannot be expressed by a linear combination of these two vectors. Let's repeat the argument, even though it's almost the same as it was in the original case. Well, these two vectors lie in some plane, and all linear combinations of these two vectors will also lie in the same plane. And because the target vector does not lie in the same place, in the same plane, it cannot be expressed by linear combinations of these two vectors. So this pretty much wraps up the case of geometric vectors. Other configurations are possible, maybe some involving the zero vector, but the gist of all of those configurations will be the same. Now, how does that help us with other vector spaces? How does that very clear, simple, and intuitive picture help us in more algebraic scenarios? Well, first of all, we have to translate our arguments 
into, into a language that applies to other vector spaces. Because the words line and plane do not apply to other geometric, uh, to, excuse me, to other vector spaces. They're strictly geometric terms. They only apply to geometric vectors. So instead of the words line and plane, we simply have to say subspace. That's how you carry over ideas from geometry to the world of algebra. So here's what we would say. We would say that a decomposition problem does not have a solution if the target vector does not lie in the subspace spanned by the decomposition vectors. That same wording applies to vectors in Rn and all other vector spaces. And you can even say it more concisely if you use the word span as a noun. A decomposition problem doesn't have a solution if the target vector is not within the span of the decomposition vectors. The exact same thing, just a little bit shorter. So now that we have expressed the right question in the right language, how do we actually answer it? In other words, how do we determine whether a target vector lies in the span of the decomposition vectors? Well, at first, we'll do what, we'll, what we always do. We'll consider a few special situations where this question can be answered with a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of insight. And then, ultimately, we'll work towards an algorithm that can answer this question in any situation, no matter how complicated. And that algorithm will, of course, be Gaussian elimination. But that's in the future. What we're going to do in the next video is consider a few insightful examples with polynomials. And then in the video after that, a few examples in Rn. And that will lead to other interesting discussions having to do with how do you identify or describe the span of a set of vectors.